when you've when you've seen this unidentifiable stuff, is your presumption that it, that it is a China or a Russia testing some some crazy technology that we somehow don't have, and that the only other explanation is if it is not us ourselves, that it's something uh, otherworldly? Well, Chuck, uh, it's obviously been going on for a long time, and there's a lot of speculation. Uh we have these sightings, and I guess the report that's coming out is going to basically acknowledge that uh, there are a lot of sightings. We often forget how much unites all the members of humanity. Perhaps we need some outside universal threat to make us recognize this common bound. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. And yet, I ask you, is not an alien force already among us? When I was younger, I talk about a UFO sighting. It did fly away from me, and maybe that was a good thing, because it turns out that a lot of people who come in contact with aliens are paying the price. The Pentagon just released over a thousand pages all about UFOs program and these extraterrestrial events. And the documents reveal biological effects that UFO sightings can have on us. People have experienced all things like heart and brain problems, although it would be hard for me to tell, damaged nerves and all kinds of stuff because of electromagnetic radiation. The Pentagon apparently has hundreds of cases on file of people affected like this. So let's talk more tonight about this report and its findings with Nick Pope, a journalist who used to run the British government's UFO project. What does it say about the UFO phenomenon here in the U.S.? Well, it says that this phenomenon has completely come out of the fringe and into the mainstream and that it's now being recognized by the United States government, the military and the intelligence community as a serious defense and national security issue. A, a few years ago, this would have all been dismissed as crazy talk and, and X-Files science fiction. But now we learn the government has been taking it seriously. Uh, off the coast of Virginia 2014 by the FA-18s and the like. What is the chance that these are nothing more than the next evolution of stealth fighters or the next evolution of things that are being tested at Area 51? And of course, the government's going to say we have no idea what they are because they don't want our enemies to know about it. We want to make a good impression on the aliens. So NASA is projecting a series of messages into space, you know, to let the aliens know that we come in peace. What's in the messages? Well, a lot of boring science stuff that goes over my head like our DNA structure and some math equations, which they believe will give some aliens basic info about our society. These people have encountered something, and, and we know that because we, and, and this is in the report, of course, it's not just eyewitness testimony. Some of these things have been simultaneously tracked on radar and filmed on forward-looking infrared cameras. And okay, so is this report, is its findings evidence that we have in fact been visited by beings from another planet? That hypothesis has not, so far as I understand, has not been taken off the table. So the debate is still being had. Is, is this Russia? Is it China? Is it our own tech? Or is it extraterrestrial? 86-year-old American astronaut Buzz Aldrin has rep is reported to have passed a lie detector test over his claim that he sighted an unidentified flying object or UFO during the 1969 moon mission. Aldrin was the second man after Nina Armstrong to set foot on the moon. Last week, Aldrin answered questions from his fans about his alleged encounter with alien life in space. Why has nobody been to the moon in such a long time? <laughs> That's not a, an eight-year-old's question. <laughs> That's my question. I want to know, but I think I know. We should go boldly where man has not gone before. Fly by to comets, visit asteroids, visit the moon of Mars. There's a monolith there, a very unusual structure on this little potato-shaped object that, that goes around Mars once in seven hours. 
when people find out about that, they're going to say, who put that there? Who put that there? Well, uh, the universe put it there. If you choose, God put it there. UFOs. You've been the president. You've seen all the info. Are they real? What do you know? What can you well, tell us? The truth is that we've never proved one, but there are things flying around up there that we haven't fully identified yet. And keep in mind, there are a, a, basically a billion galaxies in an ever-expanding universe. You've seen the, the data. <laughs> well, no one knows, but I think that the probability is that there's something you would call life somewhere else. All right, and this that is the... Is, uh, yeah, I yeah. just made myself this a freak, right? This, no, is, this is book number three. Right. Right. So this when it comes to aliens, uh, there's some things I just can't tell you uh, on air. There are, uh, there's footage and records of objects in the skies that we don't know exactly what they are. Yes, you guys! Former President Obama is all but confirming the existence of UFOs with greater maneuverability and speed than anything that exists. Point. All you have to do is listen to uh, Joe Rogan's podcast with Bob Lazar to know exactly how long the military has been knowing about this and incorporating civilians. Before you leave office, will you let us know if there's aliens? Because this is the only thing I really want to know. I, I want to know what's going on. Would you ever open up Roswell and let us know what's really going on there? So many people ask me that question. I there are millions and millions of people that want to go there, that want to see it. I won't talk to you about what I know about it, but it's very interesting. But Roswell's a very interesting place with a lot of people that would like to know what's going on. This is the same machine you used on Lazar? That's it. How many polygraphs do you think you've done on this machine? Thousands. Terry Tavernetti doesn't use his gleaming polygraph machine anymore. During his many years working in corporate security at major casino properties on the Las Vegas Strip, he tested thousands of employees. Before that, he worked as a police officer in Southern California. He had no idea he and his lie detector might be drawn into one of the most controversial UFO cases of all time, the claims made by former government scientist Bob Lazar. Yeah, I think so. In November 1989, Lazar's name and face were revealed to the public for the first time in a KLAS TV news series. Lazar's claims about working on flying saucers at a hidden facility near Area 51 set off a UFO stampede that continues to this day. The job I had, the involvement with, uh, you know, the government cover-up, that sort of thing, the story isn't altered in, in any way. Lazar agreed to a polygraph test. The first one he did was inconclusive. The examiner thought Lazar was so nervous that it was difficult to get an accurate read on him. Tavernetti was recommended. He questioned Lazar about the central allegations that he had seen a flying disc at a base called S-4, that the craft was powered by an antimatter reactor and generated its own gravity. To Tavernetti's surprise, Lazar passed. My personal thoughts, the pre-test interview of three and a half hours, the test itself, the post-test interview showed absolutely nothing to detour my thought that Bob Lazar was truthful. Is it occurring to you, holy crap, this guy could be telling the truth, this mm -hmm. all could be real. Oh yeah, when that time comes, that is unbelievable. After the first news story aired about Tavernetti's test, two strange things happened. The first is he was called on the carpet by his employer because of a phone call from an unnamed federal agency. The corporate offices where I'm employed received a telephone call from a government agency wanting to know why I was getting involved in something that uh, I shouldn't be. And I asked, well, what agency, what was said, did they identify themselves? He never learned which agency had called. There was an internal investigation by his employer, but Tabernetti was not disciplined. The second thing to happen two months after the story aired is there was a break-in at his home. He doesn't regret getting drawn into the Bob Lazar saga and says the experience caused a permanent change in how he views the UFO question. Over the years, my belief has swayed that way. It gets to the point now where I go, well, why not? Is it because of that? Oh, yeah. The Defense Intelligence Agency has just released that program's 2010 report on UFOs. And among other things, the document tells us that the government can prove that UFO sightings have caused radiation burns, paralysis, and brain damage. 
The report also says that some people who saw UFOs experienced, quote, perceived time suspension. They also saw ghosts and other spirits. In all, that report lists 42 cases of adverse effects from medical files and other 300 adverse effects from unpublished cases. It's even more than that. This is not, you know, the notion of where, let's say, grandma saw some lights in, in the backyard. These are military eyewitnesses. In some cases, they're fighter pilots or their security personnel uh, that have come up close and personal with a UAP or I guess in the vernacular UFO. And uh, in some cases, they have sustained um, significant some sort of medical trauma, uh, something that can be can be looked at and quantified and qualified and, and measured as some sort of biological effect. President Obama says that there is footage and uh, records of objects in the skies, these unidentified aerial phenomenon. And he says we don't know exactly what they are. What do you think that it is? I would ask him again. Thank you. <laughs> Come on, boss, let's go. <laughs>